everybody and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And this week we will be discussing Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson, which is the sequel to Dance of Thieves that we covered last week. Yes. But it's the duology. It means it's the last one. Yes, it is the second and final. <laughs> Heartbreaking. Give me more. I will read the blurb and then we'll get into it. <laughs> Yep, I would like to pre-apologise for the sound of my voice. It may be inconsistent, because I'm still sick. Kazzy and Jace have survived, stronger and more in love than ever. Their new life now lies before them. The Ballengers will be outlaws no longer. Tor's watch will be a kingdom, and Kazzy and Jace will meet all challenges side by side, together at last. But an ominous warning mars their journey back, and they soon find themselves captured in a tangled web of deceit woven by their greatest enemies and unlikeliest allies. A place where betrayals run deeper and more deadly than either had thought possible, and where timeless ambitions threaten to destroy them both. Yes, love it. So, thoughts, feelings, emotions. What? <laughs> a sequel. <laughs> yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but yeah, what a sequel. I loved it. It was oh, yeah. stunning, gorgeous, yeah. girl boss. Yes. Um, absolutely fantastic. Loved the roller coaster that it was. So many little twists and turns. Don't know who to trust. Don't know what's going on. Everyone knows different things and have different perspectives. And it's frustrating. It's fantastic. Chef's kiss. Mwah. That's me. Mwah. Yes. What about you, Kenzie? Thoughts, feelings, emotions? Yes, very much the same. I loved it. What a great sequel. What a well, not not just a great sequel, what a well-written book all around. Uh, it is, I read a lot of books, and so do you, and I think that it is very rare where I am completely uh, in the world, where I just For let sure. it take me over. Because usually, yeah, I just read a book, I'm like, oh, okay, this is fun. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying it. It's a good read. It's good characters, blah, blah, blah. But it is very rare where I am fully immersed in it, in it. I'm loving every second and I cannot put it down. Yeah. So I was listening to this. I was audio booking this again this week. Um, and I know I've said previously that when I audio book, I tend to lose focus and get distracted by other things. I don't think I lo lost focus once with hey. this one. I was fully in it and when I uh, got home from work after listening, I would continue listening because I was so in it. that Because usually yeah, I would just listen and uh, move on when I got home and do other things. But I continued listening. I listened when I was in the shower. I listened while I was cooking. I listened while I was cleaning. I was fully in this world. Good book. I love that. Yeah, I suppose it's just a book that you couldn't really put down. And yeah, it's just so fantastic. Yeah, loved it. But yeah, I guess this means we're going to have to read The Remnant Chronicles. <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't dive know back yeah, if it was just the uh, the characters and the world that I was into. Because I don't know if I can, I'm can. i ready to leave them behind. I don't know if I'm ready for that. But are, are these characters even in The Remnant Chronicles? Is another. Ooh. I suppose we're going to have to read it to find out. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely loved it. The deception, the manipulation, what's going on? Plot twist after plot twist. Plot twist after plot twist. Although I did find towards the end there were a few kind of miscellaneous type of chapters where like the story could have ended at like any of those points but they just kept it going that little bit further just for that little bit of extra bits of information. Yeah, I remember saying to you that when I'd finished, when I was uh, listening to it, I thought... Yeah, several, in several places that that was going to be the final chapter and then it kept going. And it's not a complaint because I wanted more and I wanted more of the characters. But yeah, I was just at several points I was like, oh, this is going to be the end. But yeah, I, I suppose you'd rather have that like multiple points of ending or is instead of it being a surprise like, oh, it ended there. Mm. Like she tried to cover like all the little loose ends that has been splurged along in the book and I think they they've all been tied up nicely even though um oh there's probably one element which I probably mm, could have gone without but I suppose it's for Cassie's closure and we'll get to that later I guess yeah. but I personally would have dealt with that out but but yeah she she really does close up or ties up all the loose ends 
Yes. With, the, with the back end of the book. Yeah. Alrighty, let's kick into it, I guess. Let's yeah, start off with Kazzy and Jace returning to Tor's Watch. So, as we know from Dance of Thieves, there is a message that is sent to them um, from Jelaine that says, you need to come, Samuel is dead, they're watching over me, blah, blah, blah. And then we think that the bird gets, well, the bird does get killed, but then somehow the message still gets them, the bird is resurrected. Now that I, now that you say that, like, I feel like that doesn't make sense because I don't... Yeah, I feel like that was never uh, explained. Yeah, unless... And then there's just that overall arching theme of our messages get to us in weird ways when we need them to. I I have a little theory now that you've just mentioned that. Because Kazzy has this sort of weird relationship with with death, death. Yeah, this is death helping her. Yeah. Because I think towards the end... When she talks about her parental, her mother, and all that, like mm. I'm just gonna go straight into it. I don't care. Yeah. Like with her mother dying, she's describing how did her mum make a deal with death to like kind of watch over Kazzy, and that's why she has this sort of affinity of seeing death in in all these moments. Yeah, because Tanove has that what gift of visions, visions, and so Kazzy has kind of the gift of seeing death. There again, another theme is yeah, Kazzy seeing death pointing at her. And saying, yeah. and then again, I'm just going to spoil it because you can't talk about it. She was saying how um, she would always say, you know, blink last, die tomorrow. And she realized that it was death saying, you know, die tomorrow, like live one more yeah. day and stuff. Yeah, keep going. I loved it. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I really think now it was death giving them a bit of a hand and pushing yeah. them into the right direction. Yeah. Because, yeah, <clears throat> in that little bonus snippet, I guess from Dance of Thieves, it's like the bird is is not meant to. Is the the bird is like dead and not going to mm. be used, or the Velspray or whatever it is. But then otherwise, yeah, how else would it be resurrected? Because there is no other real theme of like yeah, dead bodies yeah. resurrecting. I think. This book. And then it didn't serve as a way to get them back because they were going back to Tor's Watch anyway. I think it just gave them a means of urgency. Yeah, for sure. Like there's distress happening right now. Yeah. But I suppose there's a congratulations in order for Jace. His kingdom is, like, recognised now. It's great. Yeah, it's the He's... first kingdom. Yeah. But let's also just kind of remember um, Jace's family, the last time they saw him, they, they're assuming he's being executed. So, yeah. obviously, uh, tensions are very high. And yes. Kazzy is very anxious because she is, like, a full official ambassador yeah. to Tor's Watch for the Queen of Vanda. So, yeah. interesting to see how that turns out. Yes. And then, because there was always Jace saying to Kazzy, oh, you know, they'll have to listen, you're with me, they'll love you again, they've loved you once before, they'll love you again. Now, I'm just going to spoil the, so Jace and Kazzy are married, um, and I had figured this out very early on, because I was thinking, um, if Kazzy's going back, or like, oh, the family will listen to you, they have to, they'll love you again. Okay, I I was thinking, but there has to be more to it because if you were just going back as his girlfriend. medieval girlfriend, yeah, that's <laughs> not enough for the family to be like, oh, okay, if he loves you. And then, yeah, because they kept talking about, um, was it Ren's or Sonobe's gift were well, present to them? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sonobe's. Yeah, of the, uh, the feast cake and the ribbon. And they kept coming back to this moment. And I don't know yeah. exactly when, like at what point. I think, oh, chapter 16, I'd sent the message saying, I think I've figured something out <laughs> and I'm waiting for it to be confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't confirmed outright and then yet at near the very end when Jace is yeah. essentially saying, where is my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Which he think he said the quote was, she, she like, Cassie's my wife. Yeah, it was a huge just declaration in itself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that I did acknowledge a lot of references back to that gift, but I didn't think of it as like a wedding ceremonial thing mm. i was just like this gift i thought it was like a gag gift that they're just gonna laugh over and it's just something they bring up but no no when it was said that it, oh it's part of a ceremony or something like that or a tradition and then so i was kind of thinking then and then when kazzy says to lid and nash lid and nashia lydia and nash oh i'm family now as well that's when i 
knew, okay, this is it, they're married, and then I was still waiting, though, for the words, and then the words finally came. I don't know, I felt so dumb. You had so much faith in me trying to see if I figured it out as well, and I (laughs) failed you. I had no clue. Yeah, it's usually so good. I know, I just wasn't paying that much attention, it seems. It just, there was too much significance being put on the journey back with this ribbon and stuff, and then how Cassie was saying to Jace, oh, I'll tell you later, or whatever. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think I was so caught up in the like the espionage and the you know playing traitor aspect. Like she's just gonna say whatever. Cause yeah, Lydia and Nash. The last time they saw her, like she was taking her, her brother, his their brother away. Like I thought she was more trying to like gain their trust type of thing. But mm. of course we know Ka- you know from Cassie's point of view, her best interest is to save them and all. But like. So let's just talk about, to add context, when they're coming back into Tor's watch, they are ambushed. Yes. Uh, and Jace is peppered with yes. arrows. He has five shish arrows kebab. in him. He's shish kebobbed. Uh, and Kazzy is blindfolded or bags put over her head, but she recognises one voice of being Paxton. Um Anyway, and so then we're left in the dark for a very long time. We don't know if Jace is alive. Kazzy has been captured. She's in a cell. She's being fed extra medicine and extra food. Yeah, she's being, but yeah, someone is sneaking extra medicine, extra food to her. She thinks it's a healer who comes in, but the healer's just like, nah, fuck you. (laughs) Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we won't get into the big reveal just yet. So when they are captured on their way back in. Did you automate and especially when they said that one of the voices was Paxton. Yeah. Oh, and there's also like rubble everywhere, like the town's kind of half well Tor's watch is kind of half destroyed. Because of the launches and all yeah, that stuff. The as launches. Well. Yeah, did you assume Paxton? Yes, of course I did. Because he was a sussy wussy little bitch in the first book. <laughs> sussy wussy little bitch. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like it's it was a very kind of obvious build up. That's I think that's kind of what I like about this these this duology as well. Like there was nice build ups. Like it wasn't kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. Like because Paxton was set up in the first book to be a bit of an arsehole, and like he might undermine the family. He has very good reason to. Yeah. Um. But yeah, for him to be again involved in this sort of coup, take back revolution thing. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. But but then I kind of figured out early that like he's probably or that he was more just a lackey than actually in any sort of leadership position because of the way he was like described when Kazzy first saw him I guess when she was out and about but yeah knew it was him or he had involvement and I obviously I knew he was helping her at that point when the take so it is revealed that uh the king is the king of Irelandia yeah yeah Montague yeah, Montague is the one who has been behind it all. It's the um, bumbly farmer king who yeah, everyone is, underestimated. Yeah, he's not a bumbling farming guy. Um, anyway, so I also thought at that point when it's revealed that it's a king, that Paxton was probably also because he it's an, yeah, revealed that he was giving uh, Kazi extra food and medicine, um, that he was probably just going along with it for his own survival at that point, like trying to figure out a way. To get out of it and help everyone. And then, uh, Kazzy is then sort of, she's treated kind of pretty poorly at the start of her capture, but then the king realizes, oh shit, I probably need you. Um, I'm gonna shower you with good things. Ka- Kazzy managed to kind of manipulate him into believing that what she had with Jace was like absolutely fake and for her mission. Yeah. Like she really made it abundantly clear. Uh, that you know, she she this was all for a mission that the queen had for her, like yeah. no feelings involved, blah blah blah. Yeah, and, and then uh, he ate it yeah. up. Kazi and the audience are led to believe that Jace is dead because yes. Paxton brings in a cut off hand <laughs> yep. with uh, Jace's patre ring on it. Because the last we saw of Jace is Kazi told his horse to run and he has five arrows sticking out of him. So, uh, did you think Jace was dead? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a big believer of no body, no death. I mean, that, that and I've seen true. this like I feel like this trope so many times that you get the cut off hand or whatever with the ring or something of someone, and yeah. And like this is kind of when I had a feeling Paxton was involved as well, mm. almost, because it's like, well, how did he get the ring? And then I was an idiot and I assumed that like. 
Because I believe the letter that Samuel was dead, so I thought like he had Samuel's hand just to make it a bit of extra, bit yeah, out of sinisterness. To I it. did think I because I thought Samuel was dead. I was thinking, oh, surely they've just yeah, he's used Samuel's hand because Kazia yeah, recognized it as Jace's, but I think it's just like a hand's a hand. Yeah, especially if it's like corp- a little bit like not corp mold, but but yeah, dead. Yeah, and like yeah, it's been a few days now, I guess, since she's seen Jace, and obviously. Mm. Safe assumption he could could have been dead. But yes, but the king eats that up as well and he is in full belief that the Patre is dead and that he is free to rule however he pleases. Mm-hmm. And Kazi keeps his ring. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. She, I think she must have persuaded um, Montague to do it, to give it well, to Well, yeah, because he just says it's a worthless, it's a trophy. And Kazi's like, okay, well, I'll take it. <laughs> I know the king admitted that like he it, this was all his plan, but at some point I didn't believe him. I thought he was still that figurehead because I still was led to believe that he was a bumbling idiot who had no clue what he was doing. For the longest time, I thought he yeah he's just the figurehead, and then Banks is the one that's in charge. But obviously, we come to learn that it's all been like the king, and so I felt like an idiot. Yeah, I always just thought it was the king once it was revealed. <laughs> yeah, we get a couple of chapters. From Jace's point of view, he's pretty much on death's door. But unlikely surprise, Paxton. Oh, it's it's not revealed in that moment yet. But uh, a shadowy figure wearing a cloak or whatever uh, delivers Paxton to Camus and Carrie. Uh, uh, Carrie, yeah, at the settlement. Yes, and is like hide him in the root cellar. Lucky you built a root cellar. Yeah, lucky you built a root cellar. And then I knew at this point, I was like, it's Paxton. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like he, yeah, no one else would have really known that area and yeah. that sort of little detail. Yeah, so then Jace is nursed back to health. Paxton, the hero we never knew we needed. Mm. <laughs> you do grow to like him throughout this book as well. Yeah. Because, like, I know he was a bit cocky and arrogant in the first book but he really did nothing like he just wanted to be part of the family (laughs) yeah exactly and like he just didn't want to be the black sheep i guess yeah but ultimately i'm so glad mason had no traitorous involvement i guess because as you said he he's adopted and i think i mentioned it last episode like i don't think we need like the adopted i never felt a part like a part of this family type of trope idea yeah anyway so kind of glad that never occurred yeah, so we find out uh, in the following chapters that the king has Lydia and Nash, Jace's younger youngest siblings, while the rest of his family is up in the vault, which is the cavernous sort of uh, structure within a mountain. Yeah. And they're holed up there because the king is hanging any loyal Ballinger loyalists or Ballingers. So they're all tucked away safe relatively yeah. safely and the kids yeah are being a bit rude to Kazzy, but then they get a moment alone and uh yeah. they're like oh no like we've been taught that if we were ever captured to go along with whatever they're saying and stuff so very smart family <laughs> yeah very smart family um and so Kazzy's thinking of a way to get them out did you know that the kids were kind of just pl- i know they're, they're playing along but in terms of their attitude towards Kazzy, because uh, again, the last time they saw her, she took their brother yeah, away no, to be executed. I didn't think that they were just playing along. I my heart was breaking for Kazzy because I was like, yeah. no, like she's come back. She thinks Jace is dead, and then yeah. the one connection she has to his family at this point hates her. Yeah, yeah, and also, um, just even amongst all that, um, yeah, the king kind of enrolls Kazzy as to be a part of his soldier one of part of his soldiers ranks and all that type of stuff and so she is tasked with having to declare the Patre being dead amongst the crowd which is fun time yeah she has to say that he was hanged um in the capital i guess yeah um and that obviously doesn't bode well with the folks but and so now she is deemed as like a tr- an extra like an extra traitor because again the whole town knew that she took him away yeah See, this is what I loved about it, though, because it's just so frustrating. It's mm-hmm. like, we know she has good intentions, but no one else does. Yes. Ugh. No one knows the truth. So, yeah, and now, and then Montague was like, if you, like, touch or bruise any of, like, his soldiers or people, the kids are the gone. The kids die, yeah. So And the so, king, the, yeah, 
king is a coward for shielding behind children. Yes, and the king is acting as though he likes them, but he's yeah, just using them as shields and he hates them. Because <laughs> they're Ballengers. And he's just using it as leverage because he knows Kazi could kill him in a heartbeat. Also, just with the king and Kazi scenes, oh, it was, it's very gross. <laughs> just between the two of them, like him, well, more his attitude yeah. towards her. Because he gives off, like, he's very jealous of Jace because he's always, he's trying to, like, one up him. Um, yeah. Because, like, how could someone fall for, like, a patre or an unrecognized king compared to an actual king? Yeah, and so, and then he's saying, you know, oh, have you ever... Th-? Because, yeah, Kazi is saying to him, oh, you know, I only kissed him. It was all part of my job. It was all part of the act. Yeah. Um, his kisses were passable or whatever. And the king's like, well, have you ever thought of kissing me? I was like, ugh, ugh, <laughs> oh. ugh. But the way the... I don't have the section. I can't get to it readily. But the way she talked herself out of having to kiss him in that moment, like pretending to be all flustered yeah. and a- l- actually attracted to him and stuff. And, oh, it's yeah. not that I haven't thought about it. Just blah, blah. like, yeah, it was such good writing. Yeah, because we know how smart she is and how adaptable she is because she needed to be. Yeah, I think there was also a bit of a theme. I think it was later on she has an encounter with the, with a seer later on and she talks about, like, the use of her tongue. And, like, obviously that's also more with the way she talks and how she yes. acts. So, like, yeah, even though that was before this whole thing, uh, after this whole thing, like, it is a recurring theme that, yeah, Kazi does, you know, she has a real talent for speaking and convincing and manipulating people. Mm. But yeah, he had very um, essay vibes. Like, yes, there were so many moments. I'm like, ew. I thought I thought it was going to go down that path, and I was so worried. And for a moment, you forget that she's 17. Yes. This whole book, I forgot that she was 17. Yes. Like, ugh. this ma- this dude is mad against like, teenagers. And also, which makes it Fire. yeah even more shocking that Kaz and Jace, Kazzy and Jace are married. But <laughs> yeah, like yes. <sighs> To that Demi Lovato song. You're 17, 29. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jace is 19. Yeah, I know, I know, but like the yeah. king. I think the king oh, yeah, is the only like a couple of years old. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd be like 21 or 22 or something. Which is no excuse, but I suppose this is considered like a young adult fantasy. So I think that's what we also forget. But yeah, one of the themes. Not that lo- there's no sauce. No. It's under the cheese. Which it shouldn't. <laughs> It's under the sauce. It's under the sauce. I also do really respect that there was no, like, yeah, spice, I guess, is the way to mm. say it. Yeah. Although I do not want to ever read the Montague and Kazzy makeout scene ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, gross. so anyway, Kazzy comes up with a plan uh, to get the kids out with Paxton's help, and it's all pretty much going to plan, and she's, I guess the kids have... Uh, a maid, a handler, uh, Elise. I was like, Oles. <laughs> yeah, in the book is Elise, yeah. Um, helped get them out. Um, but anyway, but then, because all the people, all the women are trying to get the king's attention and stuff, and they're all like, oh, like, you're the king, blah, 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 we love you. Eh. Oh, there's this one chick that pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, and so she's the one who ruins it all because Elise thinks she can trust her and, like, goes to her to Dina. hide. Dina. Dina is the pick me, love yeah. me, choose me. And then me. Dina sells them out. So all hell breaks loose. The kids are safe. The kids are safe. That's all that matters. Um, but Kazzy is being chased through the forest and she's just trying to get to the uh, second entrance exit to the vault where the Ballengers are and she's injured and she's running and uh, good scene, good writing. But yeah, pause real quick. Just yep. when she told the kids to stay in the crypt... And they were very scared because it was, like, Sylvie's crypt yeah. or whatever. And then she's like, oh, Sylvie's not here, like, in a calming way. And, like, yeah. they, they don't really understand that's that it's a law, I guess, to be broken. Like, Kazzy was reassuring them, like, I'm going to scream I'm gonna scream and cry out your names. Don't say anything. I thought they're going to fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they're going to, like, ultra betray her as well. Yeah. Because I was thinking uh, something has to go wrong. Yeah. Oh, I should, we should probably also mention real quick, like, Kazzy was mainly hired, I guess, or persuaded to join um, Montague's crew, I guess, because um, she is in task with finding the papers to the launches that Phineas had in his oh, yes. lab. So that's very important. But um, And the reason why she realised Paxton is an ally is because she had a little bit of a 
breakdown ish in one of the warehouses or something. And then Paxton was there, and he that's where he became a lot more open. And he's like, "Look, I do not want to do this. Yeah, like I want to help you." Blah 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 blah. And so that's how they make up that plan, etc. Yes. I wanted to touch on, because it's relevant at the end, but it's not really relevant to the overall story. So the king has a vial of stardust, I guess, and that helps him create magic. I don't know, he can be stronger than normal or something, or faster. Um, it's kind of irrelevant, it's not really used, but Kazzy does steal it from him and hide it while she's making out with him to escape. Because that, that's all he had left for the time yeah. being. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I'm thinking that maybe that's going to be more relevant in the Remnant series than this book, because Perhaps, there's not yeah. really yeah a lot of magic in this book, and that's why I enjoy it because it is just a fantasy, for fantasy sake. L- love love sort story quarrel stuff. Yeah. See, I thought yeah the stardust magic was going to be a bit more important. I thought yeah once it was brought up that it was going to be quite relevant to the story, but I really wasn't, which is fine. But then it just yeah highlighted that if used because he just i think he there was a moment where he was toying with kazzy and he had a little bit on his thumb and he like licked it or something and that's when he became a little bit fast like bigger and stronger and a bit more hungrier and like like you can tell that his power yeah you know grew like i understand trying it'd be difficult trying to write out and explain like a magic system but i really did not understand the whole like it opens possibilities but it's like what do you mean yeah what do you mean it's like, I understand the physical aspects, like, yeah, you might, you know, walk a little taller, feel a bit stronger, yeah, might be a bit faster, might, like, your desires take over, and I suppose his ultimate desire was to kill her. Yeah. And obviously he, but yeah, I don't know, like, that whole magic aspect, yeah, and again, though not really relevant, I was still confused with how everything works. Yeah. So... Kazzy eventually does get to the uh, entrance of the vault. And so she runs in to the uh, other Ballinger siblings. And Jace is still oh, yes. recovering at this point. Jace is still recovering. Let's um, remember that the Ballinger siblings threatened Kazzy on the way to wherever they went to the Queen. So this is a fun encounter. Yes. Uh, I hated it. So I, hated I just. It. So, yeah, sorry, simultaneously, sorry, Jace is healed at this point, and Ren and Sinove have joined him, because oh, yeah. I didn't understand why they came back. Was it because they hadn't heard from Kazzy, or...? Um, I think... Yeah, because they're I angry really... at Jace. They're like, where's Kazzy? Like... What, Priya? Oh, Sinove and No, Ren. no, Sinove and Ren, yeah. Oh, uh, I think they're mad. I'm just think, assuming... They're, they're, they're mad because he's a, he was a prisoner to them. He was still a prisoner, like, their prisoner. Like, I don't think they... I think they went elsewhere while all the deliberation happened. Yeah, but why would they come back to talk? I think that they were, they, because it was about, they were asking, where's Kazzy? So I think it might have been that maybe they, yeah, hadn't heard from her. And at that point, they should have heard from her. Maybe. Um, anyway, yeah, so Jace and Sinove and Ren are reunited and they yeah, let's are... talk about their little... The, I call them the three amigos. Yeah. Like, I just love them. So they're going back into Taurus Watch because now, yeah, they've kind of... They've heard a little bit about what's going on, that the Ballingers are stuck in the vault, that Kazzy has, is with the king. Um, like the whole place is overrun. Yeah, whole place is overrun. So they go in to the town. They find they're out in, the whole story. They're, they're in, tor- in disguise. Yeah, they're in disguise as... Uh, Kabuki, Kabaki. Yeah, so, um, like a whole different like native. Yeah, people and so Ren like. and Sinove acting as his wives. It's so funny. <laughs> it was so good. I thought, I think this is kind of around the same time. So, yeah, so they run into someone, I don't know, that Jace used to, well, knows. And Jace like, oh, like I do information, blah, blah, blah. We're going to stay at the stables. And then the guy comes back. This is afterwards. This is when they're going to get Kazzy out. I'm lying. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so they're in the town, uh, and then they uh, go um, because they hear the launches that are going after Kazzy when she's running away from the queen. The king. Yeah. <laughs> now again, completely confused. Getting confused. Yeah, so she's running away from the king. Anyway, she's made it back to the entrance. The Ballinger siblings are there. You take over. <laughs> Ballinger siblings again. I keep to reiterate the last thing they saw of her was she, they were taking her brother to their brother to get executed and they mm-hmm. were threatening her. Mm-hmm. So they do not like this bitch. Yeah, Kazzy is trying to explain um, that Jace is not dead because, it, f- of course, Priya managed to or was there when Kazzy yeah. had to announce that Jace was dead. 
Gunner and Mason were also there, and so they were also very pissed off, which, from their perspective, it is to be fair. And so Cassie's trying to explain to them what's going on. They're have, not having a bar of it. I know, because I just think, though, at that point, she's saying, you know, I love Jace. Yes. Lydia and Nash are safe. Yeah, she has this inf- good information. She like, has good information. Like, I would even take her captive if I had to. Yeah. And yeah, question sure. her and find out what's going on. I wouldn't just, yeah. Obviously, this next part pissed me the fuck off. They found, find, like, a snare from, like, the soldiers set up patrols and stuff. And so they pretty much, like, push her, because she's still very injured. They push her in it and, like, she's caught up in the snare and then they just leave her. And then I think, I forget what, no, Kazzy then yells out to them, well, mainly to Priya, as they're leaving, that, oh, Jace has a launcher, you know, in the greenhouse of the vault because... If she didn't love him, why would she know that information as well type of thing? Mm-hmm. And so they seemingly ignore her and ultimately off screen she is like captured, recaptured again and all that type yes. of stuff. So yeah, fun times. I really hated that moment. Unforgivable. I do not care. They're in my bad books. Yes. And then this is where, so it's like, Kazzy is taken away and then Jake's and Sonove and Ren make yeah, it too. It's like, it's like it's, they're just missing each they, other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that's when it, Jace is essentially, where is my wife? <laughs> yeah, where is my wife? Yeah, and I'm so Jace is pissed. I think, I've seen, I think I've seen this film before. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't like the ending. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so they're taken into the vault. Um, Jace's mum is pregnant. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> As explained as, oh, your father's last gift to me. So, so if we think about it, it hasn't been like, it's been pretty much like probably less than six months. This yeah. all the, this whole thing occurring yes. from me to from father's death to now. It's been l- less than probably six months. Well, I suppose less oh, than nine months. Oh, I think less than nine months. Yeah, well, um, I mean, yeah, so, because I understand that in terms of a full pregnancy, it's nine months. But like, I'm still thinking because if she's just months. showing, or ten months, whatever. Yeah. If she's just showing, it'd probably around like less than just less than six months, but whatever. Anyway, so that gives you a timeline, which is yeah. pretty cool. Like, I never, I really d- was not catching on yeah. to what. But the then pacing... also, it's saying I think it was mentioned that when Kazzy and Jay's are coming back, she says, "Oh, at this point, we've been gone for two months or something." Yeah. So, but if you think about it, the like the journey, the journey time there at the end of the Dance of Thieves was yeah. Really when I point. was pregnant, I didn't really start showing till like five months. I reckon from the point. Kazzy held Jace at knife point and like yeah. you're coming with me to the queen I reckon between then and on their way back it, I reckon it's been about four months yeah and then it's probably been like a month since his dad so died she, uh, yeah she's probably like yeah I'd say she's about five, five six months pregnant probably yeah anyway, anyway. irrelevant so irrelevant. digress <laughs> because yeah no, she again like kids. it's hard to get a gauge of it's just like one kid dies she keeps replacing them I know like <laughs> well, yeah it really did feel like that Anyway, uh, we find out at this point, apparently, uh, that Jelaine is dead instead of Samuel. Samuel's alive. Yeah, he was just what a unconscious sc- when Jelaine was, Yeah. So Jelaine is dead. Because someone was in the room with Jelaine as she was writing the distress note. I forget. Yeah. Who was it? It might have been Banks or someone. Maybe. Or, like, one of just, like, the guards who were just, like, the initial takeover. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Because she was in the arena. Yeah, for sure, because um, Gunner was in charge, being the Patre, because obviously they thought the Patre was dead. Yeah. Um, Gunner was in charge. He, yeah, Jace initially pulled Jelaine from the arena because of her, like, indiscretions, which wasn't that big of an indiscretion compared to what other people have done, but okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so Gunner puts it back on, and then just about the time when all shit hits the fan, and, yeah, she is subsequently allegedly killed. Yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. I didn't see a body. I was so convinced that she was dead. Like, I was waiting for a death. And then you're like, yeah, you didn't see a body. And then, like, (laughs) towards the end of the book, (laughs) we have her. (laughs) I feel like an idiot. Anyway, so, Kazzy is captured. Um, But the one, yeah, qualm that I have with this book is I hate the idea of she was captured at the start, she escapes, she's captured again. Yeah, but... It's it's frustrating, but it's annoying. I I just like I know I didn't like it when the siblings like gave her up again, but like I like I liked that though. Yeah. <laughs> Loki. <Low key. laughs> yeah. Um. So at this point, yeah, the king is like, tell me things. 
Yeah, because he, he's like, oh, you, you, you were naughty, but I could forgive you. Like, <laughs> she, he's like, I could fix her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is where I was getting like, yeah, the essay vibes again when he's like, oh, a king could find it in himself to forgive you. Yeah, he's really, yeah, because she's. He thinks she knows where these papers, these papers are, are and, like, yeah. all these shit. Because that's all he cares about. Yeah. Because... Which the papers don't end up existing, do they? They do. Oh, they do. I forgot. But, yeah, and so Kazzy is doing her... Actually, no, for this for this particular moment, because she stole his last lot of Stardust... Oh, yeah. He's after the he's Stardust. He's like, where's the Stardust? And, she, <laughs> and she's like, fuck if I know. But apparently she left it in the canyon when she was, like, hiding from them and stuff, but... But yeah, so he's like trying to interrogate her and all that, and she ends up getting a little bit tortured. Kenzie must love this because she loves the torture part. I was into it. And so I hated the, Ash- the Ashti dogs yes, or something. He was pretending to be Jace while she was in delirium. Yeah, that was mm. very. Ooh. But I knew that would come back when Jace finally saved her. Yes. I love that she. Bit of trauma too. Yeah. <laughs> we love, we love it. See, so yeah, she's delirious and like they're they're giving her a little bit of medicine to kind of like keep her going because they are planning to hang her. Yes. Although Montague was like, I won't hang hang you if you tell me where this the vial is, and obviously she's telling them all these places and sending them on a on a rat race, but you know they can't find it. Yeah. And so while this is happening, Jason, everyone in the vault are trying to figure out a plan to like infiltrate. Tours watch um, at an optimal time. Yeah. So this is in order when to also rescue yeah, Kazzy. Jason, Jason, Ren, and Snowbag go back, um, yeah. and they're chilling or whatever. And then they yeah see mm. someone, and then the guy's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, Patre. I had to tell them oh, that like the Patre. Yeah, Aleski. He's Aleski? like, oh, I had to tell them that Patre was here. And I was thinking, Pat, uh, Aleski has betrayed them. Betrayed <laughs> yeah. Them. But no, yeah, he I was, was bringing back up. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, I think they all went to the vault as well or something. Oh, no, it was, like, they met at a warehouse, I think. And, yeah, brought back up. And, like, I thought, man, I can't handle one more betrayal, my guy. Yeah. But, yeah, nah, it's all good. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people just kind of had to play along in this. Because in, in this sort of type of siege takeover, like, what do you do? Like, yeah, you, you just got to do what it takes to survive. And that's kind of a big theme of this book, too. So, you, especially with other characters, you know, try, I guess you try not to judge them too harshly. Yes. And, like, at the end of the day, you know, they're trying to establish... The king is trying to establish a sense of normalcy and bring everything back together, even though this is his doing. Yeah. But yeah, doing their best. And the live. overarching as well is Zane, um, who's holding it over Kazzy. Like, oh, I know, like, your mum's alive. I know where she is. Mm. So... He's baiting her as and well. And I thought... Actually, we'll get to it when we get to he, it. He also gave me essay vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll save something for when we're there. Anyway, Ooh, so okay. they're waiting for the announcement that Kazzy's going to be hanged. Um, and or hung. Hung, what's the right word? It's hanged. hanged. Okay. I know it doesn't make any sense, but it's hanged. Anyway, and then they find out, and then I loved this rescue scene. <laughs> yeah, this, this book as well, like, it's like almost 500 pages, but there's a lot of action sequences and plan after plan after plan. Yeah, and I usually it's don't great. like, usually when I'm reading, I kind of skim over any describing like, things Yeah. or any action scenes. I just get to the dialogue. But this was so yeah. fun, just the idea of Jace dropping down from a tree. Yeah, and rescuing, and rescuing her. her. It's like, it's like yoink. <laughs> yeah, and just because she's poisoned and she's nearly dying and he's all, stay with me, like, I, I love you. you, I got you. Oh, it was melting my heart. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I think I, I completely forget, like, kind of what happens. Is there explosions or? Yeah, because I think they yeah. shoot after them. Yeah. And they get yeah, split up going back because Jace and Kazzy get back and then they're waiting for, yeah, yes. Mason and so, stuff. I think, I think Jace brings his launcher and, like, someone, and I think, Mason, no Samuel, maybe yeah. is firing it or something. Yeah, because he wants to stay involved. Yeah, I think yeah, some firing happens, but like it's an enough distraction in order to like yoink Kazzy out of there. Mm. And they do, and then boy, is it an awkward visit back to the vault? Yes, <laughs> an awkward time. Yes, but then I think Verlin, uh 
yeah her like, embraces her or something yeah yeah after she wakes but anyway so she's out of it and then mm. she's sleeping and then uh she wakes up and jace is like i'm here it's me but because he still kind of has his disguise on yeah he she's like her. what the fuck is going on and she attacks him it's very funny i'm into that um but then she figures it out <laughs> and she's like oh my god well i love that little type of miscommunication because she has no idea why mm. what the context is behind his disguise mm. So yeah, Kazzy pretty much comes to, but of course they have an antidote at the ready for this type of dog poison. Yes. <laughs> the he- the healers in the vault are well stocked. When I imagined just the Ballingers in the vault, I just thought it was just the family. I didn't think it was like a handful of like... Well, they had what, 120? Yeah, like, like, like the help? Yeah, the help. Yeah, they took like, the help with them. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was just like the people in the town as well. Yeah, yeah. That... Like, and very close friends yeah. as well. But yeah, like yeah, I thought it was just gonna be like the immediate Ballinger family. I'm like, oh, this is all right. They just hold up in the vault. But then yeah, of course, there's like 120 people, yeah. or whatever, in there, and a lot of them severely injured, and a few have died. Yeah. Um. Although I must say, this does give me the parallel feeling of Grayson's story. That's been like. Which is why been I was going to say that. Which is why it then suddenly became relevant to me. Because in the first one, I was like, why are we getting told these? I don't care. <laughs> You don't care about like these young kids like hiding in a. Were they in the vault? They were in the vault. They, yes. Yeah, yeah, they were hiding away in the vault and the, protecting themselves from scavengers. But yeah, it's a huge parallel to that, and it's low key history repeating in a way itself. Yeah. Um. So I found that parallel quite cool. Yeah. And just the whole theme of like Jason Kazi, their conversations together. It's like you know we'll write our history together, and it's like oh, yeah, we'll have a thousand oh, more ten. years. <laughs> But yeah, the all right. So, Kazzy's in the vault. It's awkward as fuck. She's a bit better now. Yeah. We love a family dinner, right? Yeah. <laughs> awkward family dinner. Everyone came around in the end. I know, but I forget the sequence of events. But Jace does get pissed off at Priya, Gunner, and Mason for their behavior for what hap- for the for what happened with Kazzy. Because how are they to know? It's just, it's the that thing, like, the perspective, like, no one knows what's going on. Everyone is missing a few chapters. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what happened to the original plot of the story? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, so, and then they also give Kazzy a, a piss week kind of apology. Yeah. Because this is, fa- she's family now. Yeah, yeah, Jace did reveal to them, yeah, of course, that they're married and all that. <clears throat> Um, and also, Kazzy's a little bit mad because they wanted to reveal it together. And he also revealed the fact that she was a thief and named, nicknamed Ten, Ten, which obviously everyone's like, <gasps> about, but uh, they're over it. Verilyn's just glad she's claimed another daughter, I guess. I mean, she she claimed two children in the span of a short period of time. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just like... And then now it's just like the build-up of like a retake of the city. Yeah, cuz they're and, like, going what's in gonna and I loved yeah, them all like the town, well they're loyalists supporting them. Yeah, everyone's together. Everyone's together. This so let's just jump to it cuz a lot is filler until the takeover. So then yeah, they go and they take back the town, they're blowing up Tor's watch, stealing stealing launches, launches and doing blowing up the fucking warehouse, mm-hmm. doing lots all of things underground. And so then yeah, it comes to a standoff with like Banks and the king. So then they're standing standoff whatever. Um and then the king or banks or whoever brings a woman out. I thought it was Kazzy's mum at first. Yeah, me yes. too. I thought, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I was like, here we fucking go. But turns out it was Jelaine. Yes, I was like, because it was described she fell from like an office tower yeah. of the arena. So I thought that would have been pretty fucking high. Yeah. And she was holding on for dear life. She's pretty broken. Um, And they, Jace is like... Well, I'll give you me if you give us her, like a swap. And then, spoiler, she ends up dying anyway weeks later. Yeah, what a waste. Because I know, I was like, why even bother? She's alive! And he's going to kill her off anyway. The strong sense of family and he's probably triggered from yeah. Sylvie. Like, he couldn't save her. Yeah, so at this point I was like, fuck, they're getting captured again. Like, because yeah. Chase is... Back, we love a back and forth. Yeah, but then, right yeah, uh, Kazzy tells him to blink last and looks down. It's like a manoeuvre where he can, like, grab a sword off the person taking him. So, yeah, here's the thing, though. The person who threw him the sword, it was, like, Truco or something. Yeah. He's, like, Mason's Straza or... Not Mason. Paxton's Straza or something, yeah. right? Or his best buddy. Yeah. 
why did it have to be him? Because it, it felt so out of pocket. Yeah, I feel like, and because Jace like accepts Paxton at this point and like calls him like yes cousin blah blah blah, and it's like why Maybe that was a code word. Yeah, why could no? <laughs> why couldn't Paxton have been the one to throw him? Like that would have been a good redemption. I arc. feel like True Code does not know what's going on, <laughs> but it is revealed at the end, kind of like he works for himself. No, like no one tells him what to do. Blah 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 blah. But like. You've had no impact on this entire story. Yeah. Yeah, so why are you being a hero that we never knew we needed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, but because, yeah, it was also distra- described as Kazzy kind of watching, um, like, because it's a bit of a standoff, yeah. of course. Kazzy is, like, k- looking at everybody and she sees the way Truco, I guess, is holding his swords or whatever. And, like, I suppose that was a weird in- in- inclination that he's going to do something. Yeah. But no, it was so out of pocket. That's the only out of pocket thing about this yeah. that I don't really like. Other other than the fact that that Vel spray was like resurrected and yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that happens and the king is killed. Big battle. Big battle. Um, yeah, Monty, he he has such arrogance, but no skill to back up. Yeah, he's like, I'm the best swordsman. I've and surpassed Banks the master. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also quickly, it was revealed that a Devereux Banks is that guy. Um, is that guy in general? And he, he and if, if you know, you know. And he has ended up being related to uh, Il- Iler- Captain Ilarian. Yeah, He's, they're brothers. So that was fun. Yeah, not that it had held any sort of like detriment to like the story. Like it was just like a familial thing. Yeah, to hold against Kazzy, I guess. Yeah. Um, and obviously Zane is a part of the standoff. He's a fucking little weasel, but we'll get to him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the king is dead. Jace kills him. Jace yeah. kills him. Um, Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. The way, the way he killed him was pretty cool because like, I like this type of fight scene where like two people are scuffling for a knife or a gun and then you hear a shot yeah, and you just like, don't know who it is. Yeah. But um, obviously reading in Jace's chapter, you know, we see him like maneuvering his body a certain way, and that's how he stabs Montague in the chest, which is fun. And he's like, his last words were, "I was a great blank." Yeah. So like a great terror. Great loser. A word. Like, <laughs> a great bully. Yeah. So yeah, that's fun. And then Kazi and Sonove and Ren and all that, and Priya and Co. They're all killing like the other guards that had stupid names like what black teeth black or, teeth or no, bro- neck or... no neck no no broken nose whatever yeah those people like they're all gone i i don't know i really love like ren and sonove in this they're just loyal friends yeah and they, they love kazi like the sisters and it's just ugh, so good. yeah i forget the chick's name but like she made the throwing knives and like the, oh I just yeah love their com- i just love their compliment the or knives. like they yeah like they just gushed about it all the time yeah but yeah, I guess we forget that they're like seventeen. Like this is a weird childlike wonder experience as well, mm. or teenage wonder. And yeah, oh, I keep forgetting that they're so young. It's very. Oh. Tor's watch is got a mighty fucking crater. Yes. <laughs> a lot of things were destroyed. The house. I think the family house is actually still quite alright. Yeah, like I think Dark windows. Cottage was left, but. So they left to rebuild. Everyone's forgiven, I guess. Um, and I suppose it just leads on straight on to almost like a year later. Year I guess. and a half. Did they? They okay? Because I know they all meet the queen and all that type of stuff at the end. Yeah. Is that the year and a That's half? That's a year and a half later. Yeah. Okay, I want to quickly bring something up. So yes. the year and a half later, Jace is talking to a guy, negotiating a business deal. Yes. There is a, in the exact same scene in the first book, <laughs> except this time they have his little brother, Lucas. But first, it's not described as little brother. It's just described as an infant. As Lucas. As Lucas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lucas the infant. Yeah. Did you think what I thought? Yes, I thought that was a kid. Yeah. I'm like, they, damn, they work fast. I was like, oh, my out. God. But lucky, yeah, it was revealed his brother. Yeah. The brother is learning. that This infant child is... Attending his first ever business deal. Yeah. But it's so funny. Like, I just, I love the little throwback as well. Because it's like the almost the exact same sniding. It's the exact same sniding character with the sniding type of sentences. Yeah. It's like, oh, your father would have, you know. Cut me a good deal. Forget, cut, yeah, something like that. And like, I was just smiling because it's like, you know, Jason's played this game before. Yeah. So that was a fun little throwback. Yeah. Tor's Watch predominantly rebuilt for the most part. They're receiving a bunch of settlers from Venda, I believe. 
as part of like a good grace and because obviously they are now recognized as part of the kingdom's alliance and all that type of stuff and he is the like i guess king well patre still yeah. of tor's watch and so they meet queen and her husband the king and all that type of stuff except there were these other characters in these moments which i had like no idea who the fuck they were i think there's like a bernie birdie birdie or something yeah, she, I'm like, who the she fuck just she was like mentioned offhand in the first one she yeah. trained kazzy okay so yeah so she, yeah she makes an appearance yeah so that's fun and then this other guy who was like an assassin yeah <sighs> Cam something. I'm assuming Carden. that maybe they might be like in the Remnant series. I feel like yes, it gives me very much like because they all know who they are. Yeah, they seem quite important, and like he's a great assassin or something like that. Yeah, so. and then he has kids apparently, so like, which I didn't care about. I got confused because I thought this was the king and queen. I'm like, since when were their names changed? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what is going and on? And then the king and the queen are there. Um, it's yeah. fun. They have their toddler. Yeah, which is cute. Um, and obviously the family is very nervous because they've never met like the royals before. Yeah. Um, once turned outlanders now into like civilized nobles, I guess. Yeah. Um, in the span of a few months. Uh-huh. Well, and it's been six months since Ren and Sonove have seen Kazi. And yeah, they, they're off doing queen. Yeah, dreams. and they come like, oh, the queen has news for you, whatever. And the queen has made them liaisons or whatever, so they have to stay there permanently. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine you go on a mission and then you're just forced to settle in that spot for mm-hmm. the rest of your life? God damn. But I suppose they have connections. They have emotional they wanted to ties be there. Yeah. there. Quickly, how do you feel about, like, Sonove's and Mason's sort of relationship? Because in the first book, they kind of hit it off. Yeah. And it just became very awkward. I don't know. I think, like, it's assumed that they're back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just but thought, like, like, unless you're going to explore it, don't make it a thing. I suppose, yeah, because... You know, Mason also threatened Kazzy. Yeah. Well, again, while she was holding his brother hostage. <laughs> <laughs> All that perspective, people. Oh, also, just forgot real quick, Kazzy kills Zane. Oh, yeah. Which is great. We love that. It turns out he had these papers all along. Oh, yes, that's um, right. Because no one else has been able to find them. Oh, that's right, because he was like, them. I'm going to be the richest person ever. That's right, and we find out where Kazzy's mum is. Yes. But she's dead. Did, did you think she was still alive? Yeah. I thought she was still dead. Like, and oh. he was just talking out of his ass. <laughs> I thought she was alive. But it turned out she'd been dead for years. She died of a broken heart. Which is sad. But also, real quick. All right. So, Kazzy, not Ka- Kazzy's mum was taken to this, this this place. And her, I guess, role in this taken life, to my understanding, was she was sent to be the wife of the old king. Of Montague's dad. Of Montague's dad yeah. to to bear kings or sons and stuff because Montague, didn't Montague want was, a disapp- yeah. was a disappointment. Yes. <laughs> so here is my question: I wanted to ask you, were they were they married? Technically married. Yes. Then, so they were husband and wife. Yes. So Montague is technically Kazi's half brother yes. or step brother. Does she not now have a claim to the kingdom of Iceland? Islandia. Is- whatever. Islandia. Whatever. Uh, probably not. What? <laughs> No. Yeah, because they get like correspondence or something, don't they? Because there's so, no one's claimed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no one's they're, they're tr- struggling to find a leader yeah. or an heir yeah. or whatever. I'm like, Kazi is right there. Yeah. Come on. Because I think it, yeah, it's its Come own on. like entity, and because that was the yeah. issue because like they didn't draw up proper like land ba- divisions. Yeah, and, yeah. See, that's <laughs> that's what I was wanting to bring up to you. It's like, yeah, because they're technically half siblings. Yeah, uh, step siblings. Yeah. Steps and wings, sorry. And, like, does she not have a claim? The ultimate power couple. They can <laughs> oh own <God>. everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's thought no. that. And then, um, yeah, the book kind of ends. Kazzy, like, puts, like, a crown on her mum's grave or whatever, and she sees, like, her mum in death. Cute. Yeah, yeah. they're chilling. And that's when she, that's when she kind of realises, like, oh, mum, did you make, like, a deal with death to watch over me? Because... Yeah. Because I should be dead. I should be dead ten times over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, every moment. Yeah, and then, yeah, everything is wrapped up nicely. It is wrapped up very nicely. But then we get this sort of, like, epilogue. Um, and I guess it's from the point of view of a bird. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, it's a bird. And it's a bird, it's a crow, and he's found the stardust, and he's talking about how, like, ooh, it's shiny, like, I bet none of the other crows have this. And then uh, he, it's assumed that he takes it and goes off. So now the crow's going to become... <laughs> but 
No, but the stardust is trickling from the yeah, it's leaking from the vial. So, like, what does that do? What does that mean? Yeah. I suppose the crow is like it's a big analogy for the whole book. Yeah, <laughs> in a way too. It's like, oh, this is cool. I'll take this for myself. Yeah, and alrighty. But yeah, like that was so weird. But so does that not lead up to something else? Is there more books in the works? Perhaps does this reflect back to the OG? I think yeah, it'll just go series? back to the Revenant series. We're gonna have to read it and find out. Although if I read it and I find there's nothing to do with Stardust, I'm gonna be upset. Yeah. <laughs> Stardust magic. <laughs> okay, I have a bit of a qualm. Yes. About the book. Sure. Well, not the not the book, but just like point of views, perspectives, and ideologies. Almost. <sighs> How do I say it though? <laughs> Is the question. Jace is the one that orchestrated the construction and production of these weapons. So, I don't know. It's like, it's it sucks that they were kind of used against him, but what was he going to use them for? I think just protection. Just and, like, it seems like, he's, like his idea is just, like, fallen on its own sword. I mm. guess, but he can't help that he, yeah, handed it over to fugitives, which he didn't really know yeah. at the time, but... And then who then, yeah, manipulated him. It's just weird. It's like, yeah, Jace, in a way, or inadvertently, created this whole thing. And it just bit him in the ass overall. And it's just like, you created this. So then it's hard to be sympathetic towards him. Because, yeah, he's like an outlaw. Like, he's doing these illegal things. But then again, yeah, it's just probably for the protection of his presumed lands. So, like, (laughs) I don't know. I just wanted to let that out there. But, like... It's not yeah. entirely good or bad. I mean, yeah, overall I could pick apart some things, but I don't want to. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good... I'm, I'm thinking this all could have been avoided yeah. <laughs> if you manufacture these work yeah. weapons, dude. I think, though, um, that the king would have always invaded because yeah, he was a pompous little shit who thought that he deserved it. I felt like a dummy because I was like, there is no way he actually pulled this yeah. off. Like, yeah, Banks is the one that's in charge. Yeah. She's... But no... But yeah, I was very surprised, and I keep telling you this, that, like, Paxton was just a lackey. Mm. And that sort of gave it away that he might be on the inside because, yeah, he wasn't, like, he was described as, like, not cleanly shaved and, you know, rustled about yeah. and all that type of stuff. So I'm like, he's obviously not in charge, yeah. or at least in a leadership position. But yeah, glad Zane is dead. I hate that he was, like, the chase around yeah. as well. Like, because he, he's a bit of a weasel. He just kept slipping mm. away. But, but obviously, glad that Kazzy got the closure about her mother. And, like, that was kind of, like, the thing in the end and towards the end of the book where, like, because they went and visited to where she yeah. was. And, like, I'm like, I could have done without it. Yeah. Like, I would have happy for the confirmation that she's either dead or alive. Yeah, I would have just, like, yeah, an offhand, like, oh, like, we sent correspondence and she's dead. Because, yeah, then it just seemed like a bit of a drag on just to kind of tie everything up but yeah everything's tied up which is nice jace and kezzy are happy they had another ceremony a, a, yes no ceremony because M- mummy verilyn insisted because apparently no one believes vendon weddings to be like legit yeah. <laughs> so so funny like they have the moon and two witnesses and the horses yeah um also we we see nadia and even again yeah. for a little bit and they're pregnant Natia. Nati- yeah, I say Natia. Natia. It's Natia. Natia. I don't know, just because, yeah, I listen to the audiobook. But yeah, they're pregnant, they're happy, glad that they're alive and safe, lucky they're not in this mess. Yeah, where did they go? They like, just went they back to the kingdom. <laughs> oh, that's right, when they took yeah. Jace. Yep, yep, yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and it also turned out that um, Captain Illyrian and the lackeys, they all were executed and stuff, which is great. Never have to hear from them again. And yeah, over- it was just so great. I love this book. Yeah, I was going to say, overall, it was a great book. It was a fantastic duology. I think they could continue into a trilogy. I mean, with that last fucking page, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I'm happy. Yeah, I like that it was all wrapped up very nicely and I don't really have a lot of questions moving forward. And it just it made me feel good and I was very immersed in the universe and haven't felt like that in a while. <laughs> I'm currently from Blood and Ashes making me feel some feels, but... <laughs> feel some feels. Yeah, I'm feeling some things. But yeah, obviously the Remnant series must will be a must-read in the future. Mm-hmm. don't know when. We're just going to have to squeeze it in. Yeah. 
I mean, we have plenty of time. Yeah. We have all the time. We have all the time in it's the world. It's all good. Um, so that's that for Vow of Thieves. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I feel like I have nothing else to add or to say. Tune in next week for a nice standalone, <laughs> interesting modern rom com uh, that we had yeah. lots of opinions on. Um, that'll be a good yeah. one. <laughs> It was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, we hope you enjoyed this one. As always, thanks for listening. Uh, find us at Letterbox Book Club. If you find us one place, you'll find us all the places. Yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.